So in this video, I want to go through a few key problems that's associated with chapter 11. This first one here, if you read through this problem, what you see is that uh, all three parameters are changing. So pressure, volume, and temperature are changing when this uh, balloon is submerged in water. And let's just take a moment and sort of pull the data out of the problem so we can maybe see it more clearly here. So in this first sentence, it's giving us the initial conditions. And we have volume, pressure, and temperature there. And since this is the, the initial value, let me just do one for that and sort of recopy everything. Notice the temperature is in, in degrees Celsius. You need to, you'll need to change that to degree Kelvin or to Kelvin. We'll do that in just a second. And then it says when the balloon is submerged in water, blah, blah, blah. It's, now we have a new pressure. Okay, so our second pressure is at 4.7 atmosphere, and the temperature changes. So our second temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. And then there we are. We want to know the volume of this uh, balloon at these new conditions here. So that's our question mark. That's what we'll be solving for using the combined gas law equation. And again, right? All of the conditions are changing, therefore we're going to use the combined gas law. As a preview of something to come, if the conditions were static, you know, if we didn't have this particular portion, then we would use the ideal gas equation to answer something about that system. Now I said a minute ago we need to convert to Kelvin. Let's just go ahead and do that. Remember that Kelvin is degrees Celsius plus 273. And since I don't have decimals here, I don't worry about the decimal here. <laughs> if I did have like, you know, 30.2, then, you know, it's, it's a good idea to use the 0.15 value. But when I add 273 to both of these, now this becomes 303 Kelvin, and this becomes 288 Kelvin. Okay. So we want an expression. We want to rearrange this expression to where it says V2 is equal to all the other variables on a single, uh, on, on this side of the equation. Let's go to a blank page and work these out, uh, work this algebra out so we can see what's going on. So again, we want to solve this for V2. Let's highlight V2 there for us. So we want to move the second pressure and the second temperature to that side of the um, equation sign, or the equal sign. You can go through the process of cross multiply and divide to solve for this. And if you look back at um, the Charles Law Lab video, you'll see that illustrated. Instead, I want to approach this a little bit differently here. What I want to notice is that all right, if I want to remove the second pressure and the second temperature, move them on to this side of the equal sign, well, the, the algebra that's involved in that would look something like this to start out. So let's just focus on this side of the expression right now. We'll worry about the other one in a minute. Okay, so this expression is saying is that, you know, this portion is divided by the second temperature. Well, what happens to this side of the expression if I multiply by the second temperature? Well, I'll tell you. What happens is that T2 divided by itself, it actually cancels each other out. And the same thing can be said for the second pressure. Okay, So when you multiply by T2 and divide by P2, what you're doing to this side of the expression is you're canceling out the these two variables. And notice what I have left is now V2. Now, if I stopped here, that would be a huge error. <laughs> okay, you can't just manipulate one side of the expression without doing the same thing to the other side of the expression. Well, what did I do here? I multiply by the second temperature, I divided by the second pressure, and as it turns out, this is a correct statement now. Let me rearrange this. I'm going to move V2 on this side just to make it look like a normal uh, equation. I'm actually going to keep, you know, P1, V1, T1 
as a, as a set, and then T2, P2. And this is my algebra. This is my equation now. So let's rewrite this on the other page. And now I'm ready to well, plug and chug. I have all these variables. The initial values are going to go in here. T2, P2 going to go in there. Let's do that. And I'm going to anticipate the need for a little more room. Move that over. I am going to try to get the units in there. We'll see how successful I am with that. I think I'm going to be okay. And again, please do not use Celsius. None of these calculations work if you use Celsius. You have to use Kelvin. And, and just to emphasize, I mean, the parentheses up here are not needed. I'll just do that though. They're not needed, but they're not incorrect either. Okay, uh, T2 is 288 Kelvin. And then finally, P2 is 4.7 atmosphere. So mathematically, what are you doing here? Well, uh, you would multiply anything on top. You'd multiply these together. And then whatever values are on the bottom, you'll divide by each of those. Since the mathematical operations are all multiply or divide, you can actually do this sequence in any order and it should give you the same answer. And what will that answer be? Well, before I actually do the, the math here, let's just take a moment and just appreciate what, what we see with the units. Okay, this is a, a really a dimensional analysis type of logic here. You know, if you can rearrange your expressions to where the units that are not of interest cancel out, which is what's happening here. And then you're just left with the unit that you want, in this case, liters. Then that gives you a pretty good idea that you have done the calculation correct. And we have here. So again, if I plug on my calculator, 1.1 times 3.7 times 288 divided by 303 divided by 4.7, right, we are going to get 0.8 three two liters is our new volume so it actually shrinks considerably right because the temperature is decreasing and the pressure is increasing both of those causes volume to decrease you know pressure volume let's just go back here for a minute the pressure volume relationship you know that that's dealt with in Boyle's law but actually I found out that is he didn't actually discover this. It was someone else. And I can't remember the person's name, but I, I just discovered that and just wanted to share that with you. If you search YouTube, I'm sure you'll find the video. And then the uh, the other one I said, <laughs> V and T, that relationship is referred to as Charles's Law. Charles's Law was dealt with in the laboratory. I'll let the lab video speak for itself there. And then Boyle's Law, I'm going to do a problem with it in just a second. But before we do that, let me just one little last comment here. Yeah, and actually, I'm glad I did check. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. Look at the sig figs on this one. Okay? If I look at the sig figs in this problem, you know, so there's for those three numbers, there are two sig figs. Once I convert to Kelvin, okay, I have three sig figs for my temperature values. Well, what's the rule for multiplication and division? Well, we, we want to keep the um, number of sig figs that's associated with the least um, or with the values that have the fewest number of significant figures. And that means I need to round this off to two. So actually, this should be expressed as 0.83 liters is really the correct answer for that one. Now, one reason why I started off with the combined gas law is, well, basically, you can take this expression and rearrange it uh, to fit with uh, any of the other laws, like Boyle's Law and Charles's Law. 